Life from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Good evening. This is News Gio, your monthly Yu-Gi News. I'm your host, Davinator1212, and these are tonight's top stories. The weekend of the 21st was the North American WCQ. There were many powerful decks in the top 64, however, the number one deck that took the whole tournament might surprise you. Over in OCG land, Konami announced a series of summer events with a particularly interesting prize pool. A set of sleeves has the entire community in a buzz, whispering support for a certain sport-related archetype. And finally, given the result of last week's WCQ, as well as the impending Forbidden Limited list, what are some of the possible changes we will see on the horizon for the game? All this and more on tonight's News Geo. June 21st saw the start of the North American WCQ, an invite-only event where the best of the best compete in order to get their invite to Worlds over in Japan. The three-day event saw a decent showing in the top 64, reflecting the tier list with Thunder Dragons, Orkist, Salads, and Sky Strikers, all taking top spots. The final match came down to Raymond Dai piloting Sky Strikers and Dakota Angelov piloting Thunder Dragons. Thunder Dragons took the whole event. This match was interesting because despite the fact that Sky Strikers were one of the least represented Tier 1 decks in the Top 64, they did manage to make a decent running for the number one spot. Thunder Dragons does not have the best track record when it comes to winning major competitive events. However, it seems that Angelov's mixture of Thunder Dragons with several other engines, including Dangers, is what gave his deck the competitive edge, despite the fact that it was a haphazard melange of various engines. That's just what happens when things are splashable. Congratulations, Dakota, at coming in first. However, I would like to take a moment to talk about the real winners of the North American WCQ. Tevin Gadsby piloting his trick stars on stream twice. This guy is actually from an old locals I used to go to up in Rochester. It's good to see somebody I know representing Millennium twice on stream. Number two, to Combovers. It's not only Thunder Dragons that had a sweeping victory. And the biggest winner of the North American WCQ this weekend, checking your graveyard. We now move on to a story based around an issue that has plagued the WCQ as well as other recent events since Konami introduced new bylaws several months back. On this story is our very own Thomas Pellissier in the field. Tommy? It's fucking hot, man. It's like 90 degrees still. Fucking midnight. Here doing this stupid show. I'd rather be doing something for Pornhub. Oh. Are you rolling that thing yet? Yeah, we're live. Are you serious? Thanks, Dave. I'm here at a local game club where Card games and other nerd activities happen regularly every Saturday night. Unfortunately, Konami has implemented some new bylaws, one of which has taken the Yu-Gi-Oh! community by storm. This rule that has been implemented affects players in the most dramatic way. A new hygiene requirement. It has been a long-standing tradition of Yu-Gi-Oh! players to use sweating and body odor as a means to confuse and bewilder your opponent at tournaments and to totally distract them, stealing a win. With that being said, let's get some comments from the locals. Hey, sir, how are you tonight? Pretty good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. You look like a man who just stepped out of a horse's butt crack that's been festering there for a week with cheese on your moves. How do you feel about the new hygiene requirements from Konami? Thank you. Back to you, Dave. Our next story comes from the land of sushi, ramen, and used panty vending machines, Japan. A series of announced summer events with a special prize pool has the community all in a buzz when this image came up in their feeds for one of the prize sleeves. The monster card depicted on this sleeve is not a current card and has the community wondering just what she could possibly be. Given the background of the card, it is most likely she is a Cybers card, however, her sporty attitude and rollerblades has the community wondering if she might be support for the UA archetype. Could this card be the ever-elusive UA level 4 the deck desperately needs in order to shake its consistency woes? Any discord on the archetype and effect of this card would be purely speculation. However, the one thing that we can talk about is this card's obvious waifu potential. Here with us live, via the magic of Adobe Premiere, is our expert weeb and ordained minister, Marion Hicks. Good evening, Marion. Great to have you, my dude. But what can you tell us about the waifu potential of the Sleeve Lady? 
Thank you, Dave. And uh, today on my uh, segment of Waifus of the Week, we'll be going over the new UA support card. Uh, even though it hasn't been confirmed it's been UA support, and honestly, UAs can take as much of the support as they need nowadays. But we got a new card coming out. Uh, we don't know her name. We don't know what she does. Uh, but she is definitely a waifu. Now, on the waifu tier list, with 1 being Effect Veiler and uh, 10 being OCGD and Keto, where does this new card fit? Well, for me personally, as the waifu expert, um, I can definitely see her being a mid to light a 7. Uh, definitely a 7. She's got the rollerblades going for her. Now, to me personally, she seems more like a Cybers card. Uh, more like, even honestly, an FA card. She doesn't really seem to be in the UA kind of aesthetic of being big burly men that don't do shit. Uh, but, uh, realistically, realistically speaking, uh, she's a pretty good waifu. Um, definitely not a high tier waifu. Like a Shadow Priestess of Ohm. Or, you know, Ash Blossom. As the resident waifu expert, I do need to emphasize that uh, she has a lot of good things going for her. The neon aesthetic's pretty good. The rollerblades really fit into the theme of FAs, not UAs. Uh, but yeah, she's got that going for her. Some nice, slick hair, and the poses really do good. Really looking out for those uh, doujinshi uh, artists who are going to draw some really amazing Rule 34 of our girl. Uh, but yeah, that is it for Waifu of the Week. She gets a solid, strong... I think can move to strong 7 on the uh, rating. Uh, but overall, she's a pretty okay waifu, but not nothing to write home about. Pretty pretty standard stuff from the uh, people at Konami. Jerome pulling the strings as he normally does. Thank you for the segment. And uh, Dave, I'll see you later. Arigato, Marion. And with that, we move on to sports with our diversity hire, Jason DeVal. Why, you racist mo- Uh... You know what? I got this. What do you think I'm gonna talk about for the next 15 minutes? You ways? You know what? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this my way. You're right. Welcome to Ty Wolf's Duel Links Corner. Duel Links keeps getting bigger and better. With the release of the new mini set, Guardians of the Rock, there are tons of chase cards in it that tickles pretty much any fanboy's fancy. For me, just in case, Magician's Navigation, because who else but the Dark Magician players would really love a card like that. We also got the legendary dragons, Tamias, Critias, and Hermos, and all their beginning fusions to help spice things up a little bit. And one of the even bigger chase cards, Thought Out Ruler Archfiend, for all you synchro players out there trying to get yourself a nice little generic one that can help you out in the long duel. And last but definitely not least, the new Magnet Warrior, Berserkion. As far as current events are concerned, the new raid featuring Callan Kessler, the Dark Signer, and his Earthbound Immortal, Ikaku Paku. You and a couple of more dueling fans all trample against him to earn more points and win prizes. Oddly enough, with the Earthbound Immortal just being on our dishonorable mentions list, you know, I think it's kind of Konami way of slapping David in their face, even though we all know they wouldn't waste their time watching his channel. For those looking for the title of King of Games, we're going to go over the tier list right now. Okay, we're going to start at the tier 3 status. On the bottom of the tier, which is very surprising because... I want to say less than half a year ago they were running rampant. We got Blue Eyes White Dragon, a nice little beater deck just to establish enough board dominance and power to punch through your opponents. Then we're gonna go a little bit higher to Ancient Gears. Ancient Gears are pretty much the same as Blue Eyes but with built-in inherent effects that allow them to stop your opponents to activate effects when they trap. And we all know in Duel Links battle traps are among the best traps in the game still currently. And the final tier 3 deck is the Neos EX decks. Anyone who hasn't been living on the rock, Neos has been probably the most splashable cards in this format thus far. And for your tier 2 stats, we got Koken Marus, Six Samurais, and Spellbooks. Now these decks have been around for a minute. Koken Maru did get hit on the uh, limit list, so now you can only have one Cookie Mario Dragon, and I also believe Core is at two. Six Sams have been running around with the introduction of this Synchro Shien monster. You know, with the legendary Six Sams, whose special summoning capabilities are far superior to their predecessors, 
they have been honestly holding down Duel Links as a good control balance deck. And your third, but not last, in the tier two status is Spellbooks. Spellbooks has got great searchability. Their quick play spells are great interrupt. And with the combination of Silent Magician, you got a good negate and a monster that can flow something even far more powerful. And now for the tier ones, we got Subterras. Subterra Control has been literally sitting here disrupting plays and bringing out some big heavy bodies to stand in your opponent's way. Last but definitely not least, you better open up your barbershop because Red Eyes Black Dragon is running fades on all y'all. He is far better right now than your white ass dragon. You know, with the structure deck being released and a new support from the booster set before, Red Eyes has probably been one of the most surprising dominating decks currently running the meta. With cards like Red Eyes Fusion, Red Eyes Retro, and even Red Eyes Slash coming in there, this structure deck is your one-stop shop to having a competitive deck in Duel Links. With that being said, I'll catch you guys next time. Dave? Say, Jason, what was the name of that immortal card? Kakapaku? Ah, uh, yes. I will certainly be on the lookout for immortal Barack Obama. Thank you, Jason, for that colorful report. Our final story of the night takes us into Therio territory as we look at the ramifications of the results of the WCQ. With us is our bandless expert and possible goblin, Ryan Ost. Good evening, Ryan. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good evening, Dave. I am certainly required to be here. Ryan, with Sky Strikers taking several top spots in the top 64, despite the fact that they were actually one of the least represented tier 1 decks, do you believe that they will see a hit on the next Forbidden Limited list, or do you believe that the fact that they ended up not winning the event and are being reprinted in Battles of Legend will keep them off the next ban list? I think Sky Strikers will be around for a little bit longer. I don't think they're going to hit it before Worlds in August. Um, they might give it kind of a little bit of a, a, a slight hit, um, maybe with Widow Anchor, maybe with Multi Roll, but uh, I, I highly doubt they're going to be shaking up the format a ton uh, before Worlds. Once Worlds happens, and, and if they do win, if Sky Strikers do, does take it, uh, then definitely we're going to be seeing uh, much more. Uh, a much more heavy ban hammer on that one. Uh, currently, there is some more hits in the uh, in the OCG, so maybe we'll see some of that. Uh, I know some people are calling for multi roll to be hit. Uh, I think Mystic Mine is kind of what's pushed the deck over the top a little bit recently, uh, so I could definitely see that being hit. Thunder Dragons actually saw a decent representation in the top 64, despite the fact that they have a bad track record with actually winning competitive events. Do you think their win last weekend will actually put them on the next ban list, or do you think that their accessibility due to their price point gatekeeping will actually end up keeping them off the list? I don't think they're necessarily going to be hitting Thunder Dragons directly. I know in the OCG they put Colossus and Dragonhawk to one. That seems a bit excessive. I think TCG Konami is going to be hitting more around the problem. I could see them going with the uh, with the dangers more. Uh, maybe some of the guard dragons. Um, I think uh, Sarah Yuja might be one of the uh, one of the bigger problems. I think in that deck, uh, being able to pump out a big board, Sarah Yuja refill your hand and then you know go into your thunder dragon plays you know start with your your crusadias or your dangers and then uh, uh, be able to kind of shift gears and keep going i think that's probably going to be the route that they're going to take especially since the thunder dragons haven't gotten a reprint so they're still really hard to get so i think the uh, yeah i think the cost would definitely be a factor and especially if konami does decide to reprint them in the future and finally, Ryan, is there any cards that you just, you know, think will go back or forth, up or down on the list, you know, that are not necessarily tied to the WCQ? Honestly, there's there's so many cards uh, right now that could come off the ban list. Um, I know we've made arguments for the Dragon Rulers before. I really don't think they'd be doing much. Uh, even with the Guard Dragon still out, you really don't go well together much at all. Um, I, I personally want to see Double Iris Magician back, at least at one, just so I can search out my traps. Um, I mean, you could honestly go down the list, and, and if you really wanted to clear off the list, you could just give a lot of cards a hard ones per turn, and you could probably clear off half the list entirely. In fact, I think that would be a great list video for Dave to do, maybe a... I don't know, card that could come off the ban list with a hard watch per turn errata? Hmm? 
Thank you, Ryan. We will just have to see if any of this comes true. But yes, I must go. My people need me. And thank you all at home for joining us this evening for this June edition of News Geo. Join us next time as we look to what July has to offer with the release of Rising Rampage, as well as the ramifications of the European WCQ, which is going as this is being totally live recorded. And as your Yugi news comes to a close, remember, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I will see you guys next time. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.